Women Plus, we've been waiting for conversations on wealth, power, and social change, where we have been unpacking what has not been working in philanthropy and impact investing, and really the unique opportunities we have today to change this and do philanthropy and impact investing in a better way. Today, we have another very exciting guest, Sean Evaristo. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. I am so excited that you are here. Uh, Sean, I, my goodness, I had the chance to meet you um, for the first time last year as I participated mm -hmm. in an amazing uh, dance program called Self Explore, where you really um, just provided us with so many tools and particularly soul searching tools that, you know, improved our artistry and our movement. And of course, I had heard about you and movement lifestyle um, a while back, but just was deeply inspired by your leadership and, and all that you represent in, in the world of dance. And, you know, you are just a critical part of this conversation. And so before we kick off, I just, I would love for you to share with us a little bit more about who you are and your journey. Well, uh, my name is Sean Evaristo. I am a dancer and choreographer uh, and creative director. Um, but for the most part, I really just love this dance thing, like to the bare bones of it, you know, uh, the soul. And I've done a lot within my career. I moved out from San Francisco to Los Angeles, you know, many like many people chasing the dream, right? But I really was able to work with lots of different um, artists throughout my career. I've worked, been able to work within K-pop and J-pop and um, pop the pop industry inside of here. I've worked with Pharrell Williams and Miguel, Justin Bieber. I've also worked uh, with a group named Big Bang, um, who was kind of the kickoff to the K-pop realm. Now you have BTS, so it's a whole new generation. Um, but yeah, and then just sort of working my way in different parts of the world. And it's been such a huge blessing to uh, utilize dance as my career path. And through that, I've just decided that um, that is one aspect of me, but movement can help so many people. And hence my, um, my choice to actually create a company called Movement Lifestyle, which uh, we, Unfortunately, had a, a, a little shakeup with the studio this past, uh, you know, throughout the pandemic. Um, but we're shifting and moving as we need to. And including myself, I've decided to focus my energy more on uh, the holistic help for individuals like yourself uh, yeah. that want to use movement in a way that can be better for overall wellness. And that's kind of where I'm at is just helping people through movement. That's awesome, Sean. And I have to tell you, I mean, I remember, so Movement Lifestyle was such a special place because, mm. you know, whenever I used to fly out to California for meetings and, you know, most of those meetings were really uh, conversations immersed around how to solve the global water and climate crisis and philanthropy. And whenever I mm. wanted to kind of switch off and tap into a different side of myself. I always felt so welcome going to Movement Lifestyle mm -hmm. because there were all of these foundational classes and yes. there was also a place for beginners and choreography. There was just this really great vibe. And I feel like it it really speaks to your leadership, which I, you know, had a front row seat to when I, I participated in Self Explore and how you have this unique ability to, to shape and inspire people from all walks of life who, as you say, are really looking to um, tap into movement for their overall holistic health. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, there's just such a natural fit between um, that world and the conversation right now that is, is happening around the state of the world and the fact yeah. that there's a huge accumulation of wealth, all of these resources, and simultaneously there are great needs um, that will determine the well-being of the planet, of people, inequality. 
And yet yes. philanthropy in this whole landscape hasn't really yet fully evolved. It's, it's, it's still an industry where we are seeing inequalities, where we have seen you know, racial injustice, mm -hmm. where there's really room for improvement. There's innovation Absolutely. at the edges, but there's room for improvement. And so I, we would love to hear from you, Sean, what are your thoughts on where this space is in light of what we just chatted about? Well, I mean, as far as dance goes and where philanthropy could be, I just really see that there's a space to help benefit each other and lift each other uh, more than where it's currently at. And mm -hmm. if I were to pinpoint specific places that I would be uh, excited about, uh, I, I just see that philanthropy can be pushed into places of uh, like our, our dance, I call them dance OGs, our, our creators of styles. And uh, I'm, I specifically play in the realm of uh, street dance. Uh, and then I also like to play a bit outside of that, but I would love to see the creators and, and those that have created our style, like gain, uh, really see the, the fruits of their labor and and see the rec get the recognition they deserve, honor them with awards, and then really show uh, and and provide for for them, uh, because so many of us have been able to uh, just live a, a fruitful life, uh, whether in here or in here or in here or out there. Uh, like for example, I've been able to use this art to help artists. You know, I am an artist behind the artists uh, as many times and um, but I wouldn't be where I'm standing without the people that came before me and the culture that I've been a part of. So I would love to see philanthropy head in that direction. Yeah. I would love to see, you know, professional dancers overall have better financial backing, for example, like us. I came out here with a thousand dollars in my pocket until the LA chasing my dreams saying like, mm -hmm. I'm sleeping in my car, uh, b before class, you know, and then finally I actually get a few jobs here and there or get my work, my way up into, uh, you know, different jobs, but there's no fallback for us. There's no, uh, way to even know how to build. Right, you learn how to build through time and experience, but realistically, uh, the knowledge and the ability to build wealth or the ability to uh, run business, we don't have those means until more recently with the internet and whatnot. But specifically for dance, I think there can be an infrastructure built, and if we can have those things uh, with financial means, uh, we would be able to. Uh, lift much further, a little bit faster, a little bit further, farther, and with more people included, um, not just the few. Right. Oh, gosh, there's so much I want to unpack here. But those are, <laughs> those are such great points. And I think you answered my follow on question, which was, you know, what are two game changers that you think need to happen in philanthropy to really better support dance. And, you know, you really answered that, Sean. So the first in terms of really supporting the creators, I love that you share that because, you know, I feel like oftentimes when we hear about big philanthropy and dance, you know, which is great and it's rare, but when it's happened, it's wonderful, but it's still very much steered towards classical institutions. Very rarely do you hear about big philanthropy backing, uh, you know, creators who really uh, created or founded these styles under probably very difficult circumstances who are so close to the community, who are outside of the institutions, doing things even outside of just the studio. And, you know, yes. where is the movement to support those people who created things that have now given us so much joy? As you say, mm -hmm. dance brings so much happiness here and here. 
in a time where mental health is at an all time low and there is, you know, Absolutely. movement is so important. And yet it's, um, it's definitely a piece in the industry that seems to be very, um, capital start like I there's just not a lot of financing that's really supporting that original the, the creators as you say right. so I <laughs> of course you're going to make that point because you're Sean and I just it's such a great great point and the second I love your point about creating an infrastructure through which there would be a much healthier and supportive financial backing yeah. And professional dancers who, again, you know, are oftentimes the life of a show, of, of, a, of a moment where someone who might be working in finance or in technology will walk into a show and get this great wave of inspiration and go back to some of the things they're doing with, I don't know, a renewed sense of creativity or ideas. And yet the people who make that happen for us are also very rarely properly compensated. And yet there is so much philanthropy could do with dance. It's just, we haven't really, I haven't heard these two points that you just made. I haven't heard them, um, you know, being impacted and lots of, of conversations happening around philanthropy and dance. So talk to us a little bit, like what would that infrastructure look like? Do you have some mm. ideas there that you wanna share with us? If you had unlimited resources, what would be some ideas for what that infrastructure would look like? Uh, okay. <laughs> Get you on the spot, Sean. <laughs> yeah, this is big. If I had unlimited resources, uh, what would I do? I think first and foremost, uh, the mission remains the same. I will continue to help people through movement because I, I know that there is so much beauty inside of it that has yet to be unlocked for the rest of the world. Like it's, it's a, it's a, something that hasn't truly been tapped into. Um, and in a way that can help people. So for me, I think if you gave me unlimited resources, I would say, let's brainstorm together first. That's mm -hmm. my first thing, because you are the person that's, that is helping myself and my community to progress forward, let's open up the dialogue together and be aligned. Then I would reimagine what dance could be for the future of the community with my OGs, with my peers, with the future generation. I would have uh, representatives uh, at a table. Let's talk, what, what do we need as the future, the past, the present, and how can we better further each other as a whole not individually uh, and then yeah. i Sorry. i would i think no it's okay i would hire a team i would hire an actual infrastructure for the team from design to uh creative direction to you name it to uh production events all across the board we would have a full full build out team that gets paid that also has a uh, medical and insurance and all the things that takes care of your team and infrastructure uh medical you name it i want to make sure that that our team is taken care of and then then we would start with the low-hanging fruit as a whole since you and i are aligned as the person that's giving us unlimited resources let's all go back down to the bottom with the lowest hanging fruit and build upwards towards the biggest ideas. Um, mm. And what are those ideas, I think, is the main part, right? Uh, yeah. The main part is, uh, okay, there's a few, but I would say, yeah. um, <laughs> I go back to young Sean and I think about what I wish I had. And I think ML, my, uh, my business that I created to be a bridge between industry and community, that's like a, a stepping stone to what I, I really think could be, mm -hmm. right? What I think would be one of the greatest things to is, would be to have containers, uh, like holistic movement containers. What the heck does that mean? It's like putting all of these aspects that help education. So for example, movement, business, fashion, music, 
film, design, so I can keep going, storytelling, marketing, photography, leadership. These are skill building assets that people can learn to better their own and each other's businesses. Mm -hmm. Then I would add on top of that. Sorry, I'm with it. No, keep mental, going. This is so good. I would add mental and emotional wellness, personal development, physical wellness, community growth, and the last two, entrepreneurship and building wealth. If you just give people the finances that, and then they don't know what to do with it, then how do you build? But if you can give us and you teach us to fish, right, we will, you know, you give me fish, you know, versus teaching me how to fish, I think I'll be fine. Give me the opportunity to learn, to be, to grow, to build. I think you, you've, you'll gain so much more than what you invested, truly. I, I love that, Sean. And oh gosh, it just, so I, first, I love the idea of what you just shared um, at the beginning of your response where, you know, you're specifying let's get everybody to the table from the OGs yeah. to my peers, to maybe some of the, you know, younger dancers coming in the industry, you know, people with uh, financial resources to collectively think about what's our definition of success here that lifts, yes. us, lifts us up as a whole versus this kind of individual hustle that takes away from the culture and, and what we're, we're what dance is really supposed to be about, right? And so taking that first step of coming together and getting an agreement on that is uh, so well said and really aligned with something we talked about this morning on another um, event led by um, a remarkable journalist called Ellen McGurt, who interviewed a woman, Jacqueline Novogratz, who's an incredible social entrepreneur, yeah. where we unpack. I know that last name. You remember that? And, and I think yeah. I had told you about her book, but you yeah. know, we really unpack moral leadership. And a big piece of that is how do you build community and a shared definition of success instead of kind of just the individual well being? And mm -hmm. um, you really kicked off with that. And just imagine if that could happen, right? Where we're talking about a significant amount of resources that are available and you can get those different. Um, stakeholders to the table to have a candid conversation around how mm -hmm. we do that. And then yeah. the other piece, yeah. I love how you are always starting from a place of where's the low hanging fruit? Because, mm. you know, what we don't want to do is get in this realm where we're having endless discussions and then you're trying to get alignment and nothing is happening, right? So where's there a yeah. possibility to start today and build from there? And then thirdly, all the different components you add, you spoke to, really speak to the holistic piece you know it's not just dance yeah Someone skill building is one aspect but yeah there's a whole nother aspect to the human condition that yes. we need to add in place to the betterment of individual and collective so that leaves us for one last question okay. right before we have um technically two minutes so but we got this so fast so to our audience today, what is that first step that we could take to bring that vision to life? Well, let's work together. Let me introduce you to the, the, the untold stories. Let me to introduce you to the people that, that are from my community. Yeah. Let me introduce you to them and their stories and mm -hmm. show you the the beauty and all, not just the movement, beyond the movement, you know, the people and what we all have to offer, not just the struggles, but our victories too. And right. let's, let's build together. You know, what can I do uh, that can help you open um, your ears and your eyes and your heart to all of us that are that would love to work with you in any capacity that helps build a bridge so that way we can really see the future that we want to see versus just hoping for it 
We hope for it because we believe that there's a chance for us to build. But I'll tell you, last year with my company, if we were able to have resources at the moment of the pandemic that wasn't just, uh, you know, here's a loan and here's this, but actual help with a mentor or somebody that can help us grow together, uh, I, I think we would be so much uh, in, in, in a better place overall. And that, that's just one example, right? There are so many stories. I'm just one individual. We have pockets and communities of us from uh, from the dance culture, you know, and uh, I'm speaking as a uh, a young, uh, you know, I, I for me, I feel I still feel like that young Filipino kid from the Bay Area, you know, that just has hopes and dreams to um, bring this dance on a larger scale to the rest of the world to feel it how I feel it. Mm -hmm. And if we can do that for you, I promise you, and your your eyes will change, your perspective will change, and you can tr truly help us light up the world. John, thank you so much for all of that deeply inspiring words. We will be continuing this conversation. <laughs> this is just the first step, but just really appreciate your your time with us today. And I completely agree. Let's work together. Let's change our perspective on this to be continued. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.